us off at number 10 is the Busby chair. The year was 1702 when the British killer Thomas Busby was executed for taking the life of his father in law. As the story goes, Thomas was strangely obsessed and protective of his beloved chair and killed his father in law after he found him sitting in the chair without permission. Before his execution was finalized, Thomas was given one final request and he chose to have one last drink in his chair. And according to the legend, his last words were, quote, may death come to anyone who dares sit in my chair. Now, of course, no one took this entirely seriously at first. He was a man facing death and was bound to spew a concerning thing or plus he was known to be a liar and a killer, so no one really took his words to heart. That was until people actually started dying. After Busby's death, multiple reports arose of one tragedy after another, and each of them came from someone who had sat in the killer's beloved chair. One man was found hanging outside the Busby Stoop Inn after sitting in the chair, and many soldiers who sat in the chair during World War II would die days later. Could it be that he was so protective of this chair as it wasn't from our version of the universe? Who's to say? But nowadays, for the safety of everyone, the chair lives in the England Thirst Museum, hanging from the ceiling so that no one else can ever accidentally be cursed by the evil seat. Next up at number 9, the Hope Diamond. As the legend goes, back in 1666, a French merchant obtained this beautiful blue diamond after illegally plucking the gem from a Hindu idol and selling it to King Louis XIV, a sacrilegious crime for which he was later mauled to death by dogs for committing. Fast forward a few years to the French Revolution, and the cursed gem was allegedly stolen and subsequently disappeared for years, only reappearing in the 1800s. Could it be that it made its way into another dimension during the French Revolution, only to reappear and continue causing misfortune to anyone who possesses the cursed jewel? I mean, there's really no way of truly knowing. But as soon as it made its way back into society, the jewel wasted no time ruining lives, and has routinely been blamed for several tragedies over the years. Some of the misfortunes include the loss of a great fortune, people's deaths, and people taking their own lives. While some even say Marie Antoinette's death could have been linked to her possession of the cursed. Nowadays, you can find this cursed object safely stowed away behind glass in the Smithsonian, where it can no longer wreak havoc on the public. Coming in at number 8, the crying boy painting. Originally created by the artist Giovanni Bragolin, the painting of the crying boy turned out to be a national sensation, and in turn became a mass produced print that could be found for sale just about anywhere across Britain. But despite being found in hundreds of homes across England from the 1950s onward, it wasn't until 1985 when people became aware of the curse. You see, what was happening at the time was a strange pattern of houses catching on fire, all of which had two things in common. They all had purchased a print of the crying boy that was hanging on their wall, and in each of the houses, the print was found in the rubble, completely unscathed by the flames. Some say it could have merely been a coincidence, but the Essex firefighters who found the prints believed that something beyond our realm was keeping them safe from the burning houses. Coming in at number 7, a blindfolded doll. In June of 2014, a creepy doll was found on the side of a busy road in Singapore. The doll was left under a tree, blindfolded by a piece of cloth that was covered in Arabic that read Bismillah, meaning in the name of Allah. I mean, isn't that just a recipe for disaster. After the doll's discovery, a mysterious post appeared on Reddit. It claimed that the doll was known to be possessed by an evil entity and that it could walk and even talk on its own. Apparently, the original owner was so afraid the doll was going to kill her or hunt her down if she tried to give it away that she decided to blindfold it to make sure it couldn't see where she went after she left it abandoned. And for good measure, she wrote the Arabic phrase in hopes that it would keep the evil cursed trapped within. According to the witnesses who found the doll, on the road, it mysteriously vanished not long after it was found. And many believe that the curse was passed on to someone who found it and unknowingly removed the curse trapping blindfold. At the moment, no one actually knows where the cursed doll is, and some even think it could be some kind of evil entity from a parallel universe that's using the doll as a host to wreak havoc on our world. Coming in at number 6, the Delphi Purple Sapphire. Often referred to as the Cursed Amethyst, 
as, funnily enough, it's not a sapphire. The Delphi purple sapphire was a beloved stone once held safely in the Temple of Indra. That was until English Colonel W. Ferris looted it from the temple during the Indian Rebellion in 1857 and brought it back with him to England. However, Ferris soon regretted his decision as not long after his return home, he quickly began losing his fortune and his entire family started facing bad luck at every corner. At first, the family blamed the financial hit on a bad investment, but after one of their friends took their own life after holding the stone in their hands, they began to fear that some unseen force could be sabotaging them. And it wasn't just Ferris's family that reaped its misfortunes. The following owner, author Edward Heron Allen, had such bad luck that he tried three times to get rid of the stone by throwing it into a nearby river, only for it to make its way back into his possession each time. Eventually, Edward decided to lock up the stone in a box and attempt to seal its powers away, and even shipped it off to his bankers with a set of strict instructions to not open the box until after his death. But London's Natural Museum of History got wind of this so called cursed stone, and Edward gave in, giving it to them, provided they did not open the box until three years after his death, and that his daughter may never be permitted to touch it. The museum followed their strict instructions and waited their due time before setting it out on display, and they quickly discovered Edward was not exaggerating his claims. The museum curator who had handled the stone a total of three times says each time something awful has happened to him. Once he even got kidney stones after transporting the stone for an afternoon. Coming in at number 5, the Bassano Vase. As the legend goes, the Bassano Vase was a gift for a 15th century bride on her wedding day. But tragically, the bride never made it down the altar as she was killed the eve before her wedding, still clutching her beloved gift. It said the bride vowed revenge for never being able to reach the altar and marry, and many believe the curse lives inside the vase as each member of her family who took possession of it after her tragic death died soon after. But the strangest thing about this cursed object is that it vanished from the public eye for literal centuries. Somewhere between the 15th century and 1988, the vase's location was unknown until it popped up at an auction in Lyra and sold for $4 million. Could it be that the vase was in another universe all those years, honing its evil powers and waiting for the right time to return and wreak havoc? I mean, maybe. The vase was allegedly sold with a note that read, Beware, this vase brings death. And the man who bought the vase at the 1988 auction reportedly died soon after. Then the next man who bought it was a doctor who died three months later. In fact, if the reports are true, the longest anyone has ever been able to withstand the evil vase before succumbing to the curse is three months. As of today, it's unclear just exactly where the vase is, but it's allegedly been placed in police custody to try and avoid any more unneeded deaths. Coming in at number four, Anguished Man Painting. Set aside the fact that this painting already just looks like you shouldn't trust it, the story behind it only confirms its haunting exterior. Apparently, a man named Sean Robinson inherited the painting from his grandmother and, charmed by its uniqueness, decided to hang it up in his house. But not long after the painting was in his possession, Sean began sensing that something was off. The family was experiencing creaking doors in the middle of the night, saw the shadow of a man lurk around their bedroom, and would hear blood curdling screams coming from downstairs that sounded as if someone was being killed. This, understandably, concerned both Sean and his wife, and so they decided to do a bit of investigating about the origins of the painting to see if they could find out where his grandmother had gotten it from. Well, after a bit of sleuthing, they came across a story that said the painting was created by a very disturbed man who allegedly painted the picture mixing his own blood with the oil paints before immediately taking his own life upon completion of the piece. Sean and his wife, believing that the painter was haunting the artwork, decided to hide it away in their basement to keep his spirit at bay. I mean, if it were me, I would probably have taken it out of my house, but hey, to each their own. Coming in at number three, Women from Lem Statue. Nicknamed the Goddess of Death, this cursed limestone statue was first unearthed back in 1878 in Lem, Cyprus. Estimated to date back somewhere around 3500 BC, it's unknown who created the statue or what purpose it may have been intended to serve at the time of its creation. But it is believed to have been owned by four different families, all of whom died within a few years of obtaining the artifact. It said, first up was Lord El. 
Bellefonte, who six years after acquiring the statue, died along with all seven members of his family. Then was Ivor Minucci, whose entire family died within four years, followed by Lord Thompson Knoll, and once again his entire family perished within four years. For a while after that, the statue seemingly vanished, until it wound up in the hands of Sir Alan Biverbrook. And his family, who, as I'm sure you can all predict, died within a few years. Now, where was it hiding those few years? That is the million dollar question that has never been discovered. Some conspiracy believers think it could have been another universe, but we will never truly know. Coming in at number 2, The Die Book Box. Back in 2001, a man named Kevin Maris purchased the box from an estate sale. When Kevin bought the item off the granddaughter of the woman who died, she carefully instructed him to never open it, just as her grandmother had told the whole family for years. Kevin agreed, suspiciously, and took it back to his antique shop, placing it in the basement. But the box wasted no time, unleashing paranormal activity all around. The next day, Kevin went downstairs to find all the lights smashed, and his employees were were terrified, saying they had heard unruly screaming coming from the basement for hours. Now, for whatever godforsaken reason, Kevin decided the box would be a great gift for his mom, so he decided to open it. Inside, he found a note that read Shalom, two locks of hair, a candlestick holder, and some dried rosebuds. But unknowingly, Kevin also released the demon inside. One day, his mother surprised him by dropping by his shop, so he gave her the gift, only to come back minutes later to her sitting in silence and unresponsive. After rushing her to the hospital, they discovered she had suffered from a severe stroke. After this, he began taking the curse more seriously, and so wanting to keep his family safe, he tried to sell it at his shop. But anytime anyone bought it, they would promptly return it, saying there was a deep darkness living inside the item. And last up in the number one spot is Otzi the Iceman. Discovered in 1991 by two German hikers in the Otzel Apps, Otzi is an incredibly well preserved mummy of a man dating back to around 3300 BC. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Are mummies inherently cursed and evil? No. But am I ever surprised when one turns out to be? Also, no. Apparently, after the Iceman's discovery in 1991, the forensic scientist on the case, Rainer Hen, who also happened to be the first scientist to touch the cursed mummy, died in 1992 en route to a conference where he was planning to report his findings. Shortly after, one of the mountaineers who helped Dr. Hen to reach Otzi's remains died when a large rock rock fell and blew into his skull. Plus, the journalist who filmed Otzi's extraction ended up dying of a brain tumor, and it only gets worse from there. One of the hikers that originally discovered the mummy, Helmut Simon, disappeared for some time only to be found at the base of a 300 foot cliff. And the man who found his corpse died while attending his funeral. Plus, Conrad Spindler, who was at the time the leading expert on the Iceman, went on record claiming that the curse was a hoax, and that if it were true, he would be the next one to die, only to be found dead days later. Lastly, one of the other scientists who discovered too much about Otzi was found dead in his home with no reasonable explanation for his passing. So after seven deaths from people that either too much about Otzi or questioned the curse, I can safely say I never want to see this mummy as long as I live. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Tea Time. This story comes from someone who has a very strange memory from when they were around nine years old. They were eating dinner in their room for some reason that they can't quite remember. What they do remember, however, is being sat at their dresser which had a big mirror. While sitting there, the storyteller's dad came in to check on them and asked if they wanted more tea, to which they replied yes. They picked up their empty teacup and handed it to him and watched as he walked out the door. In the next instant, they looked back over and saw their same teacup, completely full of tea, right where they had just picked up the one that was empty. They of course asked their dad about this after because what in the world is going on, and their dad said that he never came into their room at all. This story is bizarre for sure, but there's also something really eerie about it as well. I can totally see why this was one that really stuck with them. In our number 9 spot today, we have the hotel room. This story starts out with a storyteller explaining that this strange story happened when they were on a family road trip. They write, quote, We stayed at a hotel for a night. Our room was nothing more than two beds and a 
restroom with a big mirror across from the beds. Everyone went to sleep but me. I stayed up playing a mobile game I was addicted to at the time. At about 2am I went to sleep. When I woke up I noticed something was just ever so slightly off. The mirror was gone, the room had two separate bedrooms, and there were three beds. Apparently I was the only one who noticed it because my family called me crazy. Still confused to this day as to what happened. It's the small changes like this that would have me absolutely freaking out because it seems small but you know something is off and different. I don't blame them for still remembering this day and questioning what exactly happened here. In our number 8 spot today we have a new phone. Okay. This one wouldn't be the weirdest one in the world, but it has to do with the lost phone and I just can't get over how strange the place they found it was. So they write, quote, My friend and I were talking to our roommate and her girlfriend one night. Roommate had just received her new phone and was sitting in bed using it while the four of us chatted. So roommate sat her phone down while we were all still chatting. She goes to pick it back up and it's gone. Like she had just put it down for a few minutes tops before she noticed that the thing had poofed. I call it for her and we can't hear it. We take the comforter and the sheets off the bed, shake them all out. We look under the bed, behind it, everywhere we can. That phone is gone. Even though we hadn't left her room at all during our conversation when the phone disappeared. We tore apart the whole apartment trying to find it. Finally, we decided to try her car. It was locked in the trunk. We live on the third floor and we were all in the same room watching her use it before it somehow teleported. There's something about finding anything in a locked trunk that seems kind of eerie and creepy and couple this with how the whole thing is seemingly impossible and you've got a lot of unanswered questions here. In our number 7 spot today we have a server's nightmare. This story starts out with someone explaining that it comes from a time many years ago when they worked as a server at a restaurant. The memory begins with the quintessential server panic experience where their coworker forgot to punch in the food order for a three top. If you work in the service industry, you know the absolute panic that sets in, especially if you're like me and never write things down. You can't go back and ask these people what they had when their food should already be out and on the table. It's a panic like none other. Anyway, so this coworker not only forgot to punch in the food, but also of course forgot what the order was. This storyteller was laughing at their stressed coworker who was obviously trying to figure out what to do, and while laughing at him, the storyteller threw out a random order at them. They said, quote, it was probably fried mozzarella, a cheeseburger with no onions, and chicken fingers. While the story teller was joking and just having fun, it turns out that somehow this was the exact order that the table had ordered and the person needed. It totally freaked the storyteller out and they even made their co-worker let them run the food to the table to make sure that he wasn't making it up. Turns out the storyteller was right and probably saved their co-worker a lot of stress and hassle. In our number 6 spot today we have the camp photo. This story comes from someone who has always remembered this strange thing that happened years ago when they were 12 years old and at camp. They explained that they were taking a photo on a disposable camera because because cell phones were still in the flip phone phase and considering the fact that they were 12 even if they weren't it's not like they had a cell phone anyway. So with this disposable camera they were taking a picture of two of their friends that they had made while at camp. This is all fine and well of course and honestly very cute but it's what's seen in the photo that really has stuck with this person. They explained that in the photo one of the friends appears twice in two entirely different poses. They explain that it still weirds them out every time they come across it. In our number 5 spot today we have employee of the month. This story comes from someone who almost had a premonition of sorts. They explain, quote, I was sitting in my office one day when my desk phone rang and it is my under sheriff asking me to bring him all of the reports, dispatch logs, any documentation reference to a specific case so I get it all together and start towards his office. I meet him in the hallway and hand him the paperwork. He asked me what it was. I told him it's the blank documentation you asked for. He then swears he never asked me for it, that he had just arrived and had not called my office. He was on his way down the hall to ask me to get it together. I mean, at the very least I hope he gave this person a raise because while this certainly was a weird experience, that's also the most efficient employee I've ever heard of. I hope that's not the new work standard though. Like, what do you mean you didn't anticipate my needs? In our number 4 spot today we have the repeater. 
This story is one that only lasted for about an hour, but it definitely was a strange and confusing hour for the person who experienced it. Basically, it started when they were watching TV with friends and they ended up landing on some sort of old 80s movie that they used to watch many years prior, but hadn't seen in quite some time. All of the dialogue from the movie came flooding back to them and they remembered what each character was going to say next. Not so weird, our brains work in mysterious ways. This however seemed to open some sort of gate, because when they changed channels and were trying to find something new to watch, this person was now able to recite every line of dialogue prior to it being said, as if they had memorized it all, but this time it was with shows they had never seen before in their life. This then translated into them being able to predict what their friends were about to say right before them saying it. Again, this strange effect only lasted for about an hour before things return to normal, but what a strange hour that would have been. In our number 3 spot today we have the inside scoop. Maybe this is a parallel universe story, or maybe this person is just a bit of a clairvoyant or something of that nature, but whatever you want to call it, this story is definitely a weird one. They write, quote, Sometimes I'll be talking to someone I've never met and very specific facts about them will pop into my consciousness out of nowhere, like this person had a golden retriever that died in 2009. Then they'll inevitably bring up the fact that I mentioned without me saying anything first, sometimes seconds later, sometimes years. This would be so strange and also so hard to navigate. You'd have all these things you seemingly happen to know about this person and now you have to avoid bringing them up until they do? It's like knowing someone's secret. That would be really weird. If you had this sort of ability, would you tell people or would you keep it to yourself? In our number two spot today, we have the wake up call. This story comes from someone who is explaining a very scary moment that their brother experienced that is kind of unexplainable. They start off by saying that it doesn't seem as though their mom believes this story, but they definitely do. Most of that is because they saw their brother after this incident and could definitely tell that something had seriously spooked him. They write, quote, he was sitting in the passenger seat driving home alongside my mom. A bright green car swerved and hit them, knocking bits and pieces of glass into his arm. He jolted awake afterwards, just in time to see the green car pass them. He claimed he felt the marks the glass left afterwards too. So basically, this guy might have somehow been in a reality where this accident really did happen, and then was able to jump realities to one with a better outcome. Or perhaps he was just temporarily transported to the other one before jumping back into this one. The possibilities really are endless when it comes to the multiverse, and I can totally understand how an experience like this would have somebody pretty shaken up. Whatever really happened here, I'm just glad that this person somehow ended up in the timeline where everything is a okay. In our number one spot today, we have the boiler repairs. This story is a bit of a longer one, but it's so strange and truly like nothing I've ever heard before. It absolutely shocked me. This person wrote, quote, This didn't happen to me, but to my dad. He works for a heating and air conditioning company, so he often has to go out to people's houses to fix things. About five years ago, he told me he had a bizarre dream where he went on a call to an elderly woman's house. He'd never seen the house or this woman before, but he said it was bizarre because of how realistic the whole thing felt. He fixed her boiler in the dream, chatted for a bit, and then left. About a week later, his company gets a call from an elderly woman needing her boiler fixed. They sent my dad on the job. When he arrived, he said it was the exact same house from his dream and the same old lady. He knew her name before before he even had to ask and knew his way around the house without having gone inside yet. When she opened the door, she said, hi Gary, and when he asked how she already knew his name, she said she had a dream last week that her boiler broke and that my dad is the one who came to fix it, so she just knew that would be his name. Two complete strangers never having met each other had the exact same dream that they would meet each other, and they did. The whole thing is so crazy. That would be so strange, but also so cool. It's almost like they were destined to meet each other in some way. Honestly, the unexplainable can be terrifying, but it can also be kind of nice and cool and truly mystifying. All I want to know now is if Gary and the elderly woman kept in touch. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the death. This one comes from Reddit user DQ Supervisor, who said, Okay, this is going to sound crazy, but I can't find a better explanation. I was driving down County Road 28 just outside of my city. The road is basically a straight line for a bit and I watched a car driving toward me in the opposite lane. It had blue headlights and as it got closer I saw that it was a black 
two door car. As the car got up to me, it hit me head on. I saw my windshield smash, I saw the car roll over mine, I smelled the smoke. I felt all of the pain. I closed my eyes, I think I died. Then I opened them again and I was in the same spot as I was less than about a minute before this person hit me. I saw the same car with the same blue headlights. As I got closer, I saw it was a two door black car. I was freaking out because this car had just hit me a minute before, but it just kept on driving past and did not hit me. I 100% believe that that car did hit me. I will be finding another way to drive home from now on. Has anybody else experienced this? I do not have another explanation. All input and questions welcome. I must have got pushed from that universe into this one. Maybe not. I don't know anything about this stuff, but nothing else makes sense. At the number 9 spot now we have the passengers. This one came from Mark of Shame on Reddit. For some reason, this one felt really real to me. They said, driving home on a storm day. I see that a side road up to the local golf course is blocked off by flashing barricades. I also spy a Mercedes parked past the barricade with its hazards on. I stop and walk up to the car to see if they need help. I'm an EMT. I shine my light into the back seat to see a man slumped over, apparently asleep. Thinking I've got a few drunks, I move up to the driver window and rap on the glass and shine my light in. The driver is sitting bolt upright, unmoving, staring straight ahead. My window wrapping or light does doesn't cause him to blink, flinch or move. I look over and the passenger is slumped forward onto the dash. This begins to creep me out. I call down to the sheriff's station and request a code 2 unit up to my location to help me check them out because the doors are locked. While on the phone I walk back to the truck to get my go bag. As I'm on the phone with dispatch she asks me to get a license number for the car just as a PG and E cherry picker truck comes rumbling down from up the closed road. I move to go around the truck to get the plate number and the car is is gone. I talked to the driver of the truck and he said there was an 80 foot tree down across the road and that he didn't think it to be open for at least a day or so. So the question is where the hell did the car go? Tree up one way, barricades down the other. It's kept me a bit unsettled when stopping at accidents and hazards ever since then. Coming at number 8 now we have changing faces. Reddit user HiAerie1 commented in a parallel universe thread saying that for a single day his parents faces swapped. People obviously obviously asked for more details. He said, I woke up in the morning and at first I didn't realize anything was weird because it was like 6am and I was still half asleep. But after showering for school and waking up a bit, I noticed that there was something weird about my mom. Then I realized it wasn't my mom, it was my dad, but he had my mom's face. I was going to say something but then my little brother got up and was like, good morning dad, like everything was normal. Then before I had time to process everything, I had to leave for school. Everything was fine at school and I almost forgot all about it. But when I got home, I saw my dad again, still with my mom's face. Then my mom walks in and starts talking to him, and she has his face. At this point, I am just dumbfounded. I have no idea what's going on. So I just sit down and start doing my homework. And when my little brothers get back from school, they just act like nothing is wrong. So I just decided to go with it and not say anything at all. I mean, I didn't want them to think I was going crazy or anything. I woke up the next morning and everything is just back to normal. But I still have dreams about it sometimes. Moving on to number seven now, we have the garden. This is a strange one that comes from Stefan1403, whose story involves three generations of his family. Family. He said, it was summer and my grandfather, grandmother, mom and I were working in the garden. It's pretty big and there's a lot of grass to be mowed and stuff like that. After all the work, my mom would always ask me to go and get some soda because everyone was thirsty from working. It was in the evening but still pretty warm. After everyone had their soda, my mom asked me to put it in the back of the fridge which was in the basement. Used as a living area, only a small part of it is really storage. So. I go to the basement and please note the room with the fridge is like 20 or 30 seconds from the exit and you have to pass two doors with those flappy anti fly curtains. I put the soda in the fridge, close the fridge and walk out. Seems normal right? Except I had to do this three times. The soda kept reappearing whenever I put it in the fridge and turn my back on it. 
Everyone was outside and there was only one bottle of soda in the whole room. To this day, I am still confused over what exactly happened. There have probably been more moments like this in my life, but this is the one that I remember the most. At the number 6 spot now guys, we have crossed wires. This one involves answering machines, hopefully. Some of you guys aren't too young to even know what they are. The story comes from Reddit user Kill All Extremists. They said, this happened about 15 years ago. I called my friend up and he wasn't home, so I left a message on his answering machine. I said, hey, it's me. Sorry I missed you. Call you later. Bye. And then I hung up and left the house. I made no other calls. Later that day, he called back and he says, wow, that was quite a message you left. Who was that girl you were talking to? I was like, what are you talking about? I wasn't talking to any girl. Well, as it turns out, the message didn't end after I said bye. I actually had to go over to his house and listen to this message a few times for myself. After my initial message that I did leave, as I already quoted, there was a slight pause and it continues on for another 30 to 40 seconds or so with me talking to some girl. It was my voice, but a conversation I never had with a girl whose voice I didn't recognize. You could compare it to the message I know I did leave and the two voices were indistinguishable. Not just the voice, but you know, talking mannerisms. It was my voice. Also references to my occupation and activities were the same. Basically, in this conversation I was talking to this girl about going skiing, but I had to go down to my shop and work on a car first, which totally correlated to me. Then the message just stopped. It was recorded on one of those digital answering machines that recorded the message to a chip, so there was no tape I could have taken and had analyzed, unfortunately. Also, neither I nor my friend had party lines, so that's not an explanation. It was very freaky and I just can't explain it. Moving on to the number 5 spot now, we have the closet. To get to Narnia, you have to go through the wardrobe. Everyone knows that. Do they also lead to other parallel worlds though? Reddit user Minus Flower said, In my parents' bedroom was this really large master closet. It was technically just one closet, but it had two doors going into it. Between the two doors was a high shelf and a hanging rod for clothes, so it functioned like two separate walking closets, but you could walk from one to the other by ducking under any clothes hung in the middle. One night, she was in her side of the closet and she saw through the gap between the shelf and the clothes rod my dad walk into his side of the closet. She heard the metal coat hanger sliding as he looked for something to wear and saw the clothes in the middle sway as they were brushed from side to side. From her side of the closet, she started talking to him about something random. Then she heard the bathroom door open. She poked her head out of the closet to see my dad clearly just emerging from the shower. He walked to look into his side of the closet and nothing. And up until the moment she poked her head out to look at the bathroom door, she would swear to you she could still see my dad in that closet. Next up and number four now, we have the money. This one comes from Reddit user ShadowJack00. The story is actually from a friend of theirs. They said, a friend of mine from Toronto was in a bar in New York on a business trip. As he paid for drinks and food a few times during the night, he noticed a woman Woman watching him intently. After a while, she came over and struck up a conversation with him. Eventually, she commented that she noticed he had colored money in his wallet. She seemed, as he put it, eager to the point of being afraid to mention it. He told her, Yes, he was Canadian and he had some Canadian money in his wallet. She demanded he show her and so he did. She was apparently very disappointed and started to cry a bit but refused to talk about it any further. Feeling bad, he tried to cheer her up and the two of them got a bit hammered together. He admitted that his goal was to not spend the night alone but he did anyway. At one point, he asked her why she wanted to see his Canadian money and after a lot of coaxing and more drinks, she told him. She said that up until a few months before, US money had always been different colors. Ones were green, tens were blue, and hundreds were brown. She couldn't remember the other colors, she told him. She said the colors were not bright like Canadian money, but were sort of a set of dark tints. She said the brown hundreds were called bricks because the brown tint they had was similar to a brick. Then she said one day they were all green and she was the only one who seemed to remember them being different colors. My friend pressed her and she said there were other differences too, not just money that she noticed. Popular TV programs were different or had the wrong actors in the lead roles. There was more but my friend couldn't remember what else she said. After a while, she just started crying, saying she finally thought she had found someone who would convince her she wasn't going crazy and he turned out to be a Canadian instead. Shortly after, she left 
And that was the end of that. Moving on to number three now, guys, we have Quantum Thief. Now, that has to be possibly the coolest name I've ever given to a story on this channel. I bet that will be a movie title one day. Anyway, this one comes from Reddit user Nymaz, who said, Ever since I was a kid, I have what I call doubling occasionally happen around me. I put something in a pocket, then later find it in another pocket, as well as the original in the original pocket that I put it in. And yes, it has happened to money before. The most standout example was when I was a teen at camp. All the leaders had engraved plastic name tags, and we were issued only one. I used to keep moving mine between my hat and my shirt. At the end of camp, I just crammed all my stuff in a duffel bag and headed home. Later, when I unpacked, the first thing I do is to pull out my hat with the tag on it. Okay, so that's where I had it last, I thought. And of course, a minute later, I pull out a shirt with the same name tag pinned to it. I also experienced a similar phenomenon when I was a kid. For a few years, it happened on a daily basis, but haven't seen it in a long time now. Someone would place something in their pocket or backpack, but when they went to grab it later, it would be missing. I would then reach into my backpack or pocket and pull the item out. I initially got accused a lot of being a thief, but when it happened repeatedly, when I hadn't even been within 20 feet of the victim, my friends and classmates stopped doing so and just kind of accepted that that would always happen around me. Next up at number two now, we have pancakes. This is a very recent one posted to Reddit by user Julesmer, who said, when I was around seven or eight, I distinctly remember going to a restaurant and getting a plate full of fruit and then heading back to my hotel and went to the hot tub. My sister Alex and I were talking about the activities we had done that day, and before we knew it, we headed back to our room. Our parents were at the casino and had left us pancakes and a note saying they'd be back in a few hours. We went to bed and had this dream that there was a bunch of lights with my sister's voice in the background. When I had awoken, me and my sister were in a cabin in a completely different state. I went to wake up my sister and I told her about my dream. It turns out we both had the same one, but instead of me hearing her voice, she heard mine. We both had no clue what to do, so we walked around. There had been a hot tub near our cabin and the same lady working at the other restaurant. We had talked about going to the fruit bar with our parents and had asked them if we drove to a different place while we were sleeping, but they just gave us a strange look and asked us what we were talking about. To this day, me and my sister still talk about what happened that night and think of new theories to explain what happened to us. And finally at number one now, we have Janet's dead. It would be pretty terrifying if someone your family thought was dead just walked into your home. It would be even more terrifying though if you were the only one who realized it. This Reddit user said, Last night, I was on the phone with my mom, and she told me to come over for dinner. Everything was going great. Then suddenly, she comes out with, Janet is going to be there. I was like, very funny, mom. Great one. But in my head, I was thinking, that's really not funny. Why would you say something like that? Then my mom keeps going on with this. You haven't seen her in forever. It'll be nice. Janet died last year, though. I have a vivid memory of it. I did not attend the funeral, but I remember everyone talking about it and making a scene of it because she died young. She died of cancer, and I remember her husband coming to visit and being very depressed. I never saw her body or anything, but I am 1000% certain this woman is dead, and I remember many family members talking about it. I never saw the body or visited her grave, and I wasn't that close with her, so I never had much grief over it. But I have vivid memories of her dying and my relatives being depressed over it. I was really weirded out by my mom on the phone, and finally, I came out and said, Janet's dead. What are you talking about? And my mom just kept talking like it was ridiculous or like I was kidding around. She jokingly said, she's back or something like that. I asked my dad later on and he looked at me like I was insane. I also can't find the obituary online, but I never looked for it to begin with. Starting off this countdown, we have the dreams. Posted by the user Lost Within Myself, they believe that when they sleep, they travel to a parallel universe. To save the confusion, she calls them Universe A and Universe B, Universe B being the parallel universe. So in Universe A, our current universe, she is a 30 year old female with dark brown hair and green eyes. She was adopted when she was little and is an only child. She has been married for 7 years and she has a little baby boy. But in Universe B, a lot of things are different. For starters, she has purple dyed hair instead of brown hair, she was never adopted, and she is the youngest of five children. She has a different husband and they have no children. Freaky, right? 
But keep in mind she only goes to universe B when she's sleeping. You could say maybe she just has wild dreams. But one time in universe B she was smacked across the face by her husband and when she woke up in universe A she had a throbbing red mark across her face. Moving on at number 9 we have the lost friend. Posted on reddit by Gata Yeet, she is part of a friend group of 5. But recently one of the friends in the group felt like someone was missing. She felt like they were always a friend group of 6. But she can't figure out who it is that's missing. So it's believed that that friend switched universes and is now in one where she has a group of 5 friends instead of 6. In our 8th spot we have the different dog. So each universe is slightly different. Some buildings might disappear, maybe you live on a different street or you're taller or people around you behave a bit differently. Well for the user Mr. Stuffed Baconator, he is now living in a universe where his uncle's dog is completely different. So a couple of years ago he went back to Brazil to visit his uncle's dog for the first time. The dog's name is Sebastian and he is a white Samoyed. Then just last year he went back to Brazil and his uncle's dog is now a huge Labrador. Still named Sebastian though, just a completely different breed. He asked his aunt and uncle what happened to their old dog, but obviously they had no clue what they were talking about. That was the only dog they ever had. In our 7th spot we have the swap. This next reddit user keeps switching between universes. He notices that every day something changes. For example, items in his room keep disappearing, his shower head turned from grey to black, and street signs keep changing around him. One day the street sign will be brand new, the next day it will be rusty covered in vines. This has led him to believe that every day he wakes up in a new universe, one that is slightly different. Honestly that would drive me insane. But hey if I ever lose an object I now know it's because I'm in a different universe, one where I never owned that object to begin with. Making our way down the list at number 6 we have the new items. Reddit user Blood of Loki shared a story about the time he was recovering in the hospital after a near death experience. When he was finally well enough to go home the hospital gave him the items he had come to the hospital with. These items were a green coat and a hat. But he has no memory of owning these items in the first place. But inside of the jacket was his personal items, so it's not like the hospital just gave him the wrong stuff. So he believes that sometime during his hospital stay he switched to a different universe, one where he entered the hospital with that coat and hat. We are now at our 5th and halfway mark with the changes. Like I mentioned before it would drive me insane if I woke up and things around me just changed. Well this is what happened to the reddit user Drizzle. So one night he went to bed on his white and black bed sheets. But when he woke up the next morning his sheets were black and red. He also found that his laptop was covered in stickers, although he always thought putting stickers on electronics was stupid since it ruins the look of them. But there he was, different sheets and a different laptop. He asked his mom about the sheets seeing if she somehow changed them, but she had no clue what he was talking about. Also the night before he got into a fight with his family and he woke up expecting that they would still be mad at him. But they weren't at all, it's like the fight never happened. So he believes that overnight he traveled to another universe. Meaning that his other self got sent to the universe where his family is mad at him. Like imagine waking up and not knowing why everyone is upset with you. That would just add more fuel to the fire, like the parents would be like, oh stop pretending like you don't know. <laughs> Yikes, I bet that was a rough morning for that version of himself. In our fourth spot we have the wives. This next story is pretty eerie, but also really cool. So posted by the reddit user AJNox09, he shared the time he swapped places with his other self. So first it's important to note that his wife to be passed away when he was 20. Down the line he got married to another woman who he's been with for 20 years and they have two daughters together. So one day they were all at a restaurant when all of a sudden he became very dizzy, he even grabbed the table to brace himself. When he turned to look at his wife he saw that it wasn't his current wife. No, in her place 
was his 20-year-old wife-to-be and their daughter, who looked just like her. Then he was overcome with a dizzy sensation again, and when it stopped, he was back with his current wife. Which means that in another reality, his wife-to-be never passed away, and they went on to have a life together. Which also means he's technically married to two different women at the same time. Like, is that considered cheating if your other self has a different partner? In our third spot, we have Nair. Reddit user Gange underscore 316 claims that he is from a parallel universe where Earth is called Nair. Yep, he said that back on Nair, people started disappearing all over the world without a trace. Then one day, he did too, and he showed up on Earth. He then reached out over Reddit to see if anyone else on there was from Nair as well. Apparently, a lot of things are different back on Nair. His planet is smaller, they have different countries, and they don't eat animals. Now he just wants to find a way to get back home. In our second spot, we have the drowning. Reddit user Lunatic McGee remembers the time where he almost drowned while going on a hike with his family. So while on the hike, there was a stream with a very powerful current. He decided to go near the water, but the rocks were wet, so he slipped into the water, and he was quickly pushed down the stream. Now, he remembers getting a hold of a rock and holding on for as long as he could before being dragged underwater. But then he also remembers his dad grabbing him and pulling him out of the water. So he remembers two different outcomes, meaning in one universe he drowned, and in the other he survived. And in our number one spot we have the death. So there's a theory out there that we can live on infinitely. One of ourselves in one universe may die, but in another universe they live on. I'll explain that more in a second. So Reddit user PinoBino posted the story 7 months ago. He said that he was driving to his office when all of a sudden a car came up behind him and he was overcome with an intense feeling of fear, as if that car was going to hit him. Suddenly he felt an intense jolt through his body, but nothing even happened, the car didn't even hit him. He continued driving on, but he felt an excruciating pain up his neck, and he felt extremely dizzy and sick. On top of that, he could smell and taste gasoline. He even had visions of his family receiving news that he had died in a car crash. But that never happened. So he believes that in one universe, he died in a fatal car crash, but in this universe, the crash didn't even happen. Alright, coming in at number 10, we have the deep space radio bursts. Mystery fast radio bursts were discovered in 2007. These bursts flash for a micro instant, but emit more energy than the sun does in 10,000 years. The high energy surges of long waves have been detected 18 times over the past 10 years, and and one burst in 2012 recorded in Puerto Rico occurred numerous times in the same pattern. Okay, this is what it sounded like. After fierce debates and a lot of head scratching, the source of the sound was traced to a micro galaxy 3 billion light years away from Earth. A lot of theorists have concluded that the sound is a space signal from another world or a parallel universe looking to get in touch. Coming in at number 9, we have the man from Torrid. Were we sent a man from another parallel universe, or did he arrive via some kind of portal or vortex? Our story here stems back to 1954 when a man was detained at the Japanese border after arriving on a plane from Europe to Hanada Airport. The man said he was on his third business trip to Japan that year, and he had a wallet filled with a mixture of currencies, seeming to verify his business traveller status. When he presented his passport, officials were absolutely baffled, asking where he was from. Now, the man who primarily spoke French said, Torrid. Where is this mystery place? He showed his passport again and the stamps that supported his travels. The only thing is, nobody had ever heard of Torrid. The company he was travelling to said that they'd never heard of him, and he was carrying a checkbook to a non existent bank. When he was asked to point out Torrid on the map, he pointed to where Andorra is today and seemed confused and offended to be told that it's not a real country. He was detained in a hotel overnight while Japanese authorities decided what to do with him, but by morning, he disappeared. Did he accidentally walk through a portal to another universe? 
maybe. Coming in at number 8 we have the Bernstein Bears Phenomena. Also called the Mandela Effect, the Bernstein Bears Phenomena claims to prove the existence of parallel universes with subtle differences. People vehemently claim that the Bernstein Bears were spelled with an E and not an A, and honestly I for one absolutely thought that the Looney Tunes were the Looney Tunes until I watched a video on the phenomena last year and now I'm straight up convinced that I'm living in the wrong universe as it is clearly Looney Tunes, they're cartoons. This new world doesn't make any sense. Some people out there are also adamant that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the late 1980s which is more than just a slightly altered timeline. It's not just spellings here, this is a pretty major parallel universe event. Coming in at number 7 we have Deja Vu. Deja vu, a glitch in the matrix or a signal from a parallel universe. While both seem as likely as one another, it is thought by some that the weird moments where we feel like we've been or experienced something before are actually signals that something key is happening in our parallel lives. Not only do some people believe parallel universes exist side by side, some people think they interact with one another in some way. According to Dr. Michio Kaku, an American American futurist, deja vu occurs as a result of a person's ability to flip between universes. Others believe it is because we're vibrating in unison with the frequency of another universe that's parallel with our very own. Oh, I've gone cross eyed. Coming in at number 6, we have the Lost Beatles album. A parallel universe may have given our world a gift in the form of a Lost Beatles album, Everyday Chemistry. This story goes that in 2009, a man called James Richards found him self accidentally in a parallel universe, as you do. Luckily there was also a person from another parallel universe there, a man named Jonas. Now Jonas was on a trans dimensional tourism trip from the other earth, and he told Richards that in his world, amongst other things, John Lennon was still alive and the Beatles never broke up. Richards then stole a copy of a later album never released by the band and returned with it to our earth. What did he do with one of the most sought after pieces of music from a non history that almost but never happened here? He uploaded it to the internet. Eagle eared fans were absolutely having none of it though. They said the album is comprised of clever mashups from all of the Beatles' solo careers. Richards later said that even though in an alternate universe the Beatles hadn't broke up, that didn't mean their future music ideas disappeared. I'm not so sure about this one, but I would love to hear what Paul McCartney has to say about it. Paul, tell us, is it real? I guess you're living in another universe, so you don't know, but I don't know. I feel like you'd be able to answer. Coming in at number 5, we have dreams. Could our dreams be signals from a parallel universe? Some say maybe. In a number of First Nations cultures in North and Central America, people believe that dreams allow us to walk planes in other dimensions. Their reasoning is that dreams take place in colour and can include all of their senses. They think that when you're in a dream, you are in another world, perhaps a world you already exist in if you're doing doing something strange in your dream, maybe it's a sign that actually you live a far stranger life somewhere else. Coming in at number 4 we have the bruise. Anyone else here bruise like a peach? Just me? Me? And the universe. In 2010, along with a team of researchers, Stephen Feeney of the University College in London announced that he had discovered patterns in the radiation background left over from the Big Bang. Now, this seemed to suggest that our universe bumped into not one, not two, but four other universes and was left bruised. Okay, what is the plural of universes? Universe I? Universe I? Universe I. Also, from the bruising, further researchers in California think that it is clear that this leads to some kind of like bubble universe theory, which maybe I can get on board with. Maybe Men in Black got it right when they imagined us all as marbles in a big bag. Coming into number three, we have the cold spot. In 2004, astronomers found something that baffled them an unusually cold area of space. The area is 1.8 billion light years across and much colder than its surroundings. The area also contained 10,000 
thousand less galaxies than in other areas of a similar size studied in space. A researcher from Durham University in the UK believed that the spot could be evidence of a multiverse. They said it seemed as if a parallel universe smashed into ours, affecting it like a car pile up on the motorway would, only they're calling it a cosmic shunt. They believe the impact was so vast it pushed energy out from a big region of space, therefore creating the cold spot. It's hard to get your head around, but that is what they think. Coming in at number two, we have City in the Sky. In October 2015, Chinese TV went wild when thousands of residents in two areas of the country reported seeing a huge floating city in the clouds. Puzzled onlookers saw skyscrapers in the clouds and believed that they were seeing a ghost city or the colliding of our reality with a parallel universe. The phenomenon occurred in both Guangdong and Jiangxi, with some believing it was the beginning of an alien invasion. The images were caught on camera for the world to see and promptly went viral across the rest of the globe. So, what on earth or above earth is going on? Well, even though it looks like a city in the clouds to you and me, apparently it is an optical illusion called Fata Morgana, which is a natural mirage. So, that is what a lot of scientists are saying anyway, but other people are convinced it's a sign of a parallel universe or even a window to another world. Finally, coming into number one, we have black holes. The theory of loop quantum gravity suggests that there is no point of singularity in a black hole, rather, there simply folds in the universe. Everything we know about quantum physics tells us that information is never lost, that energy can't be created or destroyed, so perhaps black holes don't suck and destroy. Maybe they suck and create. A lot of scientists are dabbling with the idea that black holes are indeed folds or portals to an older part of the universe. Professor Stephen Hawking gave a lecture in 2015 wherein he discussed how it may be possible to come out of the other side of a black hole. He said the hole would need to be large, and if it was rotating, it might have a passage to another universe. But you couldn't come back to our universe. Anyone want to take that one way trip? I don't know if I do. So, guys, are black holes portals to another universe? This seems like a good moment to mention our sister channel, Life's Biggest Questions, which answers all kinds of questions, especially like that. We love a bit of black hole chat, so head on over there where you'll hear me, you'll hear Charlotte, you'll hear Jack. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Hoya Bashu Forest. This dense woodland is located in the heart of Transylvania, Romania, which, as I'm sure you're well aware, already has quite the reputation for eerie and spooky things. The forest covers an area of approximately 250 hectares and is known for its unusual and unexplained occurrences, earning it the nickname the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. How convenient. The forest is known for its twisted and gnarled trees, which create a very haunting atmosphere, as well as the strange circular patches of land that dot the area known as Hoya, which some believe to be the result of UFO activity. The forest has also been the site of many alleged paranormal events, including ghost sightings, unexplained lights and sounds, and even disappearances, which is exactly why many believe it is a portal to another world. Some visitors to the forest who didn't disappear have even reported rashes, nausea, and feelings of anxiety afterwards. Despite its eerie reputation, the forest is also a place of immense natural beauty with a diverse range of flora and fauna. The forest is home to many rare and endangered species of plants and animals, including several species of orchids and woodpeckers. The forest is also rich in its history, as it is said it was once the site of a medieval fortress and was an important location during the Second World War. The area is also steeped in local folklore and and legends with stories of supernatural beings and witches who are said to dwell in the forest. All in all, this place is jam packed with spooky stories, strange occurrences, and beautiful but haunting scenery. All the things that make it the perfect place to enter another world. In our number nine spot today, we have the real Bermuda Triangle, not the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. The Bermuda Triangle is really just the mecca when it comes to mysterious disappearances and rumors and urban legends, so of course it had to make it onto this list today. The Triangle, which sits in between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda, earned its deadly reputation starting back in the 1970s. Since then, there has been about 80 aircrafts and 60 boats that have gone missing in the Triangle, which only fueled rumors that there was some sort of force or supernatural cause 
cause that was making this area one where people would often go missing. There have been intense electrical forces and tunnel like clouds reported in the triangle, which some may believe is the cause of the disappearances. Some others believe it's weathered patterns. Some believe it's the entrance to a parallel universe or a place where aliens like to abduct their victims. And some people just like to dismiss the idea that there's any sort of mystery at all. At this point, exactly what is going on with the Bermuda Triangle remains a mystery. In our number eight spot today, we have the Oregon Vortex. Just off of Interstate 5 in southern Oregon lies what is called the Oregon Vortex. According to local legend, it is said that this area and the strange and mysterious stories surrounding it aren't just modern legends, but perhaps it stems back further. People have said that the stories of the Oregon Vortex actually stem back to when indigenous Americans referred to it as the Forbidden Land. It is said that during these times, people traveling on horses would often find their horses refusing to go into the area. So clearly, something strange was going on in there that was spooking these animals right out. Scientists have speculated that the land might contain some kind of crossed magnetic lines that produce basically like a force field, but whatever it really is, the place is truly strange. Things appear very differently here. It's sort of like everything is an optical illusion. The area is basically a parallel universe in itself. In our number seven spot today, we have Socotra Island. Socotra Island is a remote island located in the Arabian Sea, about 240 kilometers east of the Horn of Africa and 380 kilometers south of the Arabian Peninsula, and it has been described as, quote, the most alien looking place on Earth. It is a part of Yemen and is known for its unique and otherworldly qualities, as well as its rare and endemic plant and animal species. In fact, so many species here are endemic that up to a third of its plant life isn't found anywhere else on Earth. The landscape of Socotra is strikingly surreal, with towering limestone cliffs, deep caves, and white sand beaches. The island is home to unusual rock formations and the infamous dragon blood trees. This strange looking umbrella shaped tree have a red sap inside of them, which is thought to be the dragon's blood of the ancients. In addition to its natural wonders, Socotra has a rich cultural heritage with a mix of African, Arabian, and South Asian influences. The island's inhabitants, the Socotri people, have a unique language and a way of life that has been preserved for centuries. Overall, this island is just truly otherworldly, and it offers a glimpse into a world unlike any other, with the island's landscape being compared to that of a science fiction movie set. In our number six spot today, we have Salar de Uni. Salar de Uni is the world's largest salt flat located in the southwest of Bolivia near the crest of the Andes. The area spans over 10,000 square kilometers and is characterized by a stunning otherworldly landscape. This peculiar place was formed by the evaporation of a prehistoric lake, leaving behind a thick layer of salt crust that stretches as far as the eye can see. During the rainy season, the salt flat becomes a giant mirror reflecting the sky and clouds in a breathtaking spectacle. It is truly unbelievable. It looks completely fake and is somehow super real. The unique terrain and climate of the area has also given rise to many unusual natural formations. The flat is dotted with small islands of rock and gigantic cacti, which serve as a haven for a variety of animal species. Yes, I said giant cacti. While this place is mostly devoid of life, plant or animal, that is safe for these cacti that can grow to be 12 meters or 39 feet tall. The area is also home to many active geysers and hot springs, as well as colorful lakes that are filled with flamingos during certain times of the year. In fact, in November, this place becomes a feeding ground for three South American species of flamingo feeding on local brine shrimps. These are the Chilean, Andean, and rare James flamingos. Aside from its natural wonders, Salar de Uni is also rich in cultural history. The area has been inhabited by the indigenous indigenous Aymara people for thousands of years, and they have maintained their traditional way of life and culture to this day. In our number five spot today, we have the Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point in our ocean, around 10,900 meters deep. It is located in the Pacific Ocean in the southern part of the Mariana Trench, and because of its location, lack of light, and immense pressure, it hasn't been explored very much. The extreme environment has certainly set up for there to be a whole host of species that we know absolutely nothing about, but it is not an area that can be easily explored by humans. The Challenger Deep has only been visited four times, 
and only for short periods of time. So there is so much more that is waiting to be uncovered at this deep, dark part of our ocean. And I don't know about you, but I feel like there are crazy amounts of ocean creatures that could fully be aliens. They are so strange and interesting and unique. So who in the world knows what really lurks down there? In our number four spot today, we have East Scotia Ridge. In the Southern Ocean, about 2,400 meters down, you'll find this biological community or habitat that was discovered in 2012. East Scotia Ridge is a remote underwater mountain range located between South Georgia Island and the Antarctic Peninsula. The ridge is known for its unique and very mysterious geology, as well as its diverse marine life and harsh environment. It is dark down there, but it is also hot as it is being warmed by hydrothermal vents, and it can reach temperatures up to 382 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely insane. Because of this dark, hot environment, of course we are going to find a whole bunch of new species that were previously unknown to us. Some of these species include a new kind of albino octopus, and also albino hairy lobster that's referred to as a yeti lobster, and apparently even a crab that uses its hair to grow a bacteria that detoxifies the water. Okay? Parallel universe, that's what I'm saying. In our number three spot today, we have the Paris Catacombs. The catacombs in Paris are some of the most famous in the world. This is a place that holds the remains of more than six million people, and it's also the source of an insane amount of urban spooky legends. This ossuary was created originally in an effort to eliminate the overflowing of the city's cemeteries. To be honest, this place, after being built, was mostly forgotten, but during the 19th century, it became a novelty place for concerts and private events, which is certainly macabre. After some renovations and construction, they became open to the public in 1874, and they have been the source of much mystery ever since. These catacombs are expansive, with most of them being blocked off to the public, which begs the question, why? In 2009, there is said to have been a video camera discovered inside the catacombs with footage that showed an unidentified man dropping the camera in fear of something that's also unidentified before running away into complete darkness. I'm just saying, although the catacombs sees a ton of visitors every year, I'm not convinced that we know all of what's going on down there. And I don't want to know. Keep your secrets. In our number two spot today, we have the Moval Cave. This cave is located in Romania, just a few kilometers from the coast of the Black Sea, and it was first discovered in 1986. This cave has been isolated from the outside world for millions of years, and basically everything that goes on inside of it is different than what we are used to. The cave life is not based on photosynthesis and rather chemosynthesis. The level of oxygen in the cave is around a third of what is normally found in the atmosphere, and of the 48 species found in the cave, 33 of them were endemic to just the cave. This cave looks absolutely terrifying, but thank goodness for the brave scientists who don't let that get in the way, because as scary as it looks, it is just as, if not more, amazing to be able to hear about what exactly this cave holds. In our number one spot today, we have the Zhangjiajie National Forest Park. This stunning nature reserve is located in the Hunan province of China, and it spans over 11,000 hectares, and is known for its towering sandstone pillars and breathtaking natural scenery. The park is characterized by its unique and otherworldly landscapes, which includes thousands of the tall sandstone pillars that rise up from the ground. The pillars are often shrouded in mist, creating a very mystical and surreal atmosphere. Visitors can explore the park's many hiking trails, which wind through dense forests and lead to stunning lookout points, including the famous Avatar Hallelujah Mountain that inspired the scenery in the film Avatar. You too can visit Pandora right here on Earth. The area is also home to a diverse range of flora and fauna, including many rare and endangered species. Aside from the natural, this is also a spot rich in history, as it was once the home to many ancient temples and shrines located within the park. The area has been inhabited for over 3,000 years, and visitors can explore many historic sites and learn about the region's rich cultural heritage. Overall, this national forest park is a truly spectacular destination that combines natural beauty, cultural history, and a sense of awe and wonder that is sure to leave visitors feeling as though they went to another world. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle is the mecca when it comes to mysterious disappearances and rumors and urban legends, so of course it had to make it onto this list. The Triangle, which sits in between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda, earned its deadly reputation starting back in the 1970s. Since then, there has been about 80 aircrafts and 60 boats that have gone missing in the Triangle, which only fueled rumors that there was some sort of 
force or supernatural cause that was making this area one where people would often go missing. There have been intense electrical forces and tunnel-like clouds reported in the triangle, which some believe is the cause for the disappearances, some others believe it's weather patterns, some believe it's the entrance to a parallel universe or a place where aliens like to abduct their victims, and some people like to dismiss the idea that there's any sort of mystery at all. At this point, exactly what is going on with the Bermuda Triangle remains a mystery. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Oregon Vortex. Just off of Interstate 5 in Southern Oregon lies what is called the Oregon Vortex. According to local legend, it is said that this area and the strange and mysterious stories surrounding it aren't just modern legends, but that perhaps it stems back further. People have said that the stories of the Oregon Vortex actually stem back to when indigenous Americans referred to it as the Forbidden Land. It is said that during these times, people traveling on horses would often find that their horses would be refusing to go into the area, so clearly something strange was going on in there that was spooking the animals. Scientists have speculated that the land might contain some kind of crossed magnetic lines that produce some sort of force field, but whatever it really is, the place is truly strange. Things appear very differently here. It's sort of like an optical illusion. The area is basically a parallel universe in itself. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point in our ocean, around 10,900 meters deep. It is located in the Pacific Ocean in the southern part of the Mariana Trench, and because of its location, lack of light, and immense pressure, it hasn't been explored very much. The extreme environment has certainly set up for there to be a whole host of species that we know absolutely nothing about, but it is not an area that can be easily explored by humans. The Challenger Deep has only been visited four times, and only for short periods of time, so there is so much more that is waiting to be uncovered at this deep, dark part of our ocean, and I don't know about you, but I feel like there are insane amounts of ocean creatures that could fully be aliens. They are so strange and interesting and unique, so who in the world knows what really lurks down there? In our number 7 spot today, we have Point Nemo. I'm sure there's a few of us out there who dream of time alone, away from other people, and Point Nemo is exactly that. It's like a parallel universe where if you were to visit, you'd feel like you were the only person on Earth. This is the most remote location on Earth. It's officially known as the Oceanic Hole of Inaccessibility because it is the furthest point away from land. This area is surrounded by more than a thousand miles of ocean in every direction. There are obviously no humans who live even close to Point Nemo, which is why it is called that in the first place, Nemo being Latin for no one. This location is so isolated that the closest people to Nemo aren't even on this Earth. Since the inhabited areas closest to the point is over a thousand miles away, the humans aboard the ISS are way closer than anyone on land. Truly just wild. Kind of sounds like a dream. Kind of sounds like a nightmare. In our number 6 spot today, we have Kawa Ijen. Located in Indonesia, this is one of the most remarkable and interesting places on Earth. Firstly, this active volcano emits hot, flammable sulfurous gases. These gases ignite as they enter the oxygen-rich atmosphere of Earth, and this causes them to burn with a stunning blue flame. Further scientific processes also allows for there to be a flow of molten sulfur that also has that same striking blue flame. At night is really when you get quite a show from this coloring, as it quite literally looks like a flow of blue lava. The other incredible thing about this location is that there is a one kilometer wide caldera that is filled with turquoise blue water. The watercolor, while it looks gorgeous, is a result of extreme acidity, as well as a high concentration of dissolved metals. It is an astonishing place to look at, and really is quite magnificent. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Devil's Kettle. This area is said to hold one of Minnesota's greatest mysteries. As the Brule River flows through in order to make its way toward Lake Superior, there is a point where it makes an 800 foot drop in 8 miles. Because of this journey through time, waterfalls have been created as the water erodes the rocky terrain. One waterfall in particular is the one that we want to talk about today. The stream splits into two as it falls over the edge. One of the two streams flows exactly how you would think it does, while the other is a little more mysterious. On this side, the water rushes into a cavern that seems to go nowhere. The cavern never fills up somehow, but no one can figure out where the water is going. It's a strange phenomenon that has resulted in the fall gaining the nickname the Devil's Kettle. It is said that people have tried to place things in the water that might help show them where the water is flowing to, but despite these efforts, the items were just never seen again. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Pyramids of Giza. One of the most mysterious places on Earth has to be the Pyramids of Giza. I mean, how? For centuries, people have wondered and tried to find answers as to how they were built at all, let alone with limited resources and without the use of modern technology. And they've been around for the last 4,000 years, so the durability alone is outstanding. 
understanding. This alone is the source of much mystery, but that's only the outside of them. What lies on the inside might just be even more so. The pyramids of Giza, especially the Great Pyramid of Giza, were believed to have been built as tombs for rulers and other wealthy people. That totally makes sense, except for the fact that there hasn't been any mummies found inside of them. Instead, there is just a plethora of secret, unexplored rooms, hidden doors and mirrors, you know, just regular ancient Egypt stuff. Many of these secret rooms remain completely unexplored over fear of damage. One more strange thing about these incredible creations, before we move on though, they were built on the center of the earth. However they did this, they aligned them perfectly with Orion's belt, with no technology, just pure brilliance. I'm just saying, if any where is going to take you to a parallel universe, these pyramids will take you back in time to a completely different world. In our number 3 spot today we have the Crooked Forest. Forests are already creepy. This one looks like it's straight out of a Tim Burton film. The Crooked Forest in Poland. There's around 400 odd shaped pine trees near the town Grafino. These trees are about 90 years old and all of them from the base they immediately bend towards the north and then slowly curve back towards the sky like the other trees. Despite the odd bend, these trees are otherwise healthy. There's been so many theories, but none of them really stick. Some suggest it was a gravitational anomaly, but that's a little too far-fetched for me. I don't know. This isn't interstellar, right? Other theories claim that there were heavy snowfalls that would weigh down the branches, which could check out, but why is it just a select amount? I've also lived in Canada my entire life. We have lots of snow, and I've never seen a sleepy hollow tree before. My favorite theory is that farmers were trying to make the tree curved on purpose to make stronger wheels, because the grain direction would make for naturally curved wheels. Again though, nobody knows for sure. What are your thoughts? Do we like the wheel theory? I'm just gonna keep a spare tree tire just in case. Keep it stored safely in the trunk. Okay, jokes. I'm funny. In our number two spot today we have the Catatumbo River. Basically, in western Venezuela, right over the Catatumbo River, there are these insane, intense lightning storms, and it's a complete atmospheric phenomenon. This lightning occurs 140 to 160 nights a year, 9 hours per day, and from 16 to 40 times per minute. That is absolutely insane. That is so much lightning. Another thing that's so fascinating about this lightning is that it is colorful, and it doesn't produce any thunder. The lightning does change its frequency up from time to time, and at one point it stopped for a few weeks and people thought that maybe it was going to have been exhausted forever, but that changed when the lightning came back, putting it right back on our list of mysteries that we just can't quite figure out. Many people have studied the lightning, trying to figure out how exactly it has been created and what makes this phenomena what it is, but we just aren't quite sure yet. And finally, in our number one spot today, we have the reverse waterfall. This mysterious and strange location is another one that comes from India. Here there is a waterfall, but it's got a catch. While we all of course expect to see water cascading down, when we think of a waterfall, this strange location instead sees the water moving towards the sky. Some people believe it's because of some anti-gravitational force, others think it's due to the heavy air pressure, and I'm not a scientist, so I'll let you decide. While this is certainly quite a strange place, it also definitely delivers when it comes to beauty. I think even if the water flowed down like a normal waterfall, this area would still see a lot of tourists just because of the immense natural beauty. Mm -hmm. 